All right, in this video, I'm going to introduce the for loop in pairs, which is a variation of the for loop I did in the last video. It repeats a section of code a known number of times. But the for loop in pairs is optimized to work with a collection of objects. If you look in the world here, you can see that I have a collection of these little zombie spawn points, right? They're just basically parts that I'm going to use as spawn points. That collection is going to be stored in a table. We're going to use the for loop in pairs to spawn zombies at those points. Let's check it out. We'll hit play. Get our laser because zombies are coming. Look at that. So you can learn some something about tables. You can learn something about uh, what do you call it? Cloning. We're going to clone these and the for loop in pairs, which is the main objective of this video. And this is going to keep spawning because I put it inside a while loop. I'll show you how to do that too. All right, so let's go and get a fresh world and get started with that. All right, so here's a fresh world. I think I'm going to add a part to the world. This is going to be my first spawn location, right? Maybe name it P1, okay? And it doesn't have to be big. It's just a point that we need. So I'm going to go to size. I'll make that size one by one by one, smaller position. I'm going to make it 40 on the X, four studs high, zero on the Z. I played around with that location until I found one that I liked, right? It's not magic. Cool. Now collisions are off. I just turned them, I turned them on and off, but turn it off. Do a control D to duplicate in place. You got another point, maybe call this P2. I am just changing the name so when we print them out, it makes sense. You could keep it all apart, really. And then let's go to that position, make that negative 40. Boom. Cool. Let's go ahead and select them both. I hit a control, then click the one that wasn't selected. Control D, that duplicates. And we'll just add another point. There we go. Or rotate it so you make two more points. Let's call this. P3 and P4. Cool. Select P3 and P4, Control D, and rotate those. There we go. We got like a little hex thing going. All right, let's rename that. Rename that to P5. Rename that to P6. Sweet. Now we got a collection of objects. Let's put that in a model. Click P1. Shift click P6, we got them all. Right click, group. Cool. And then call it something to make sense. Zombie spawns. Ah, oh, I, I want an S on there. Spawns. Cool. We need a zombie. We need a zombie to clone. Go to toolbox. And I recommend using the drooling zombie at least until you get all this done. Then you can swap out your monster. Don't try and do too, var too many variations when you're trying to learn something. All right, so here's a drooling zombie made by Roblox, highly rated item. That way you don't have something that some kid modified. It warns you about the scripts, hit okay. We can turn that off. I don't want this in my workspace right away. I'm gonna put this in server storage. I'm gonna spawn it with a script. Server storage is great for storing stuff on the server, but you don't want the workspace until you, use, you activate it with like a script. Cool. Let's go to server script service. Let's go hit plus sign, add a script. I'm gonna call this Z spawner. Z, whoops, spawner. Make this bigger so you can see it. Let's get our locs, our locations, our, our zombie spawn locations. I'm gonna call it locs. That's why I was calling it locs. Now that's in the workspace, zombie spawns. And what we want, we don't want the model, we want all these individual objects, colon, get children. Nice. Now we can print those out, right? So Lokes is gonna hold all of those locations in a collection, oops, Lokes. Now in order to print this out, go to view, output, you might get a table address and not the actual parts. So if you're getting that, go to these three dots, make sure log mode is off, right? And then, then you'll get your parts. So let's go ahead and try it. Play. 
There's our Lokes. We can open it. Ah, oh, look at that. P1, P3, notice it's not in order. We will do sorting in another video, but it's fine for spawn locations. So we have this Lokes. This is the key. It's inside brackets. Actually, one is the key. This is the value. So this is our counter, right? One, two, three, four, five. When we did in, in our for loop, that's pretty cool. If we want to get each individual element or one individual element, let's say, let's get the third one. That's P2, right? Let's go ahead and print it. P2. See that? We got our P2. We didn't get the whole collection because we, access, we, we told it which one we wanted in that collection. All right. Let's get our old for loop, 4i and i equals zero uh what is it one i equals one we want to go to the number right so there's six of these we could put a six in here but what we're going to do if there you have like maybe maybe you have like 300 and you don't know like 303 or something do this uh pound sign lokes and that's going to get the number of objects in lokes so that's going to get us a six in our plate in this in this case we're going to do steps of one do and then we could do our little printout. This should print through all of them. Lokes, I'll say Lokes in loop. There we go. Print it. There we go. We got through all of them. Lokes in loop. Cool beans. All right. So now we're going to do the for loop in pairs. Why is that better? Uh, I don't know. It's just a newer thing. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. We're going to get the counter, the I, that stays the same. And then I'm going to say loc in pairs, open parenthesis, locs do. So here we're passing in the entire collection, not a stop point because the stop point uh, isn't needed because it knows to stop when it gets to the end of the collection. This is the counter in case you need a counter. This is the actual object. So this is going to be the P1, P3, P2, P5, like that. So we no longer need that I. We're just going to have loc. We're going to have this, right? So now we're going to get exactly the same thing. Sweet. I will go into why we need this, because when we start doing key valued pairs in a dictionary type format, like, like a map, if you've done Java, we need this. We can't use the counter style. So just in case you're wondering, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm gonna do that when we're doing uh, data stores, persisting data. All right, so we're not using this I at all. A popular way of doing that, of telling people we're not using the I, is put this underscore. That way other programmers are like, oh, they don't use the I in a loop. This loop might get really long. We don't want them to have to look through the whole thing to see if there's a counter anywhere. We're just using this, right? That we're getting from that. Sweet. Okay, let's make a zombie and spawn it. Let's get a zombie. Remember zombies, we have our zombie in server storage. We have one, we're gonna clone it. So we're gonna call this the zom template. And let's get server storage first local ss for server storage do this game get service because server storage is a service server storage <clears throat> and if you hear the term singleton service it means there's only one of these right we're not we can't we can't create more server storages we only have one single server storage now our zom template it's going to be our drooling zombie we're going to get that from server storage we're going to say Wait for child, just in case it's not ready on startup and stuff like that. It probably will be. Drooling zombie. So this drooling zombie must be spelled the same as that drooling zombie, or you'll get an infinite yield error here. Or if you don't have it here at all, you'll get an infinite yield error. So now we got a template. Let's get rid of that. Let's make a new zombie, local zom, with our zom template. So use colon clone, right? Creates an exact copy. So if you're used to Java, this is a deep clone. This is gonna make an exact copy, right? And in Java, the clone doesn't do an exact, doesn't do a deep copy. 
All right, so now Zom parent must be in the workspace in order to see it. Cool. It could be a, a child of the workspace, but it has to be related to the workspace in that child parent relationship. We want to move each zombie to our location, right? We can't do the position because zombie is a complex object, which has a lot of different parts to it, right? It's a model, but models have something cool called a move to, and we'll do loc dot position. And that is going to move our zombie to the position we want. And let's go ahead and play it. And there's the zombies. Look at that. Not that hard. Let's go ahead and loop it so we have waves of zombies. All right, so all we do is get a while loop, while true do, right? We're going to encase that entire for loop with a while loop. And we need to put a pause in there, give you time to kill stuff, wait maybe 10 seconds. Look at that, our, our format is all messed up, our indents. Let's go to format selection, format document. Now we have a nice format and we have waves of zombies. So of course, we're gonna need to go to home, toolbox, gun, and most of these don't work, right? People upload stuff that don't work. Draw, draw this to our, pull that to the workspace. Yep, I know there's three lasers. I tested this early, so I know it earlier, so I know it works. Get that hyper laser, move that down to your starter pack. Starter pack, and now you can use it. It's going to be in your backpack. And let's get our laser out. Let's make sure we don't have any errors. Ah, there we go. Just took a while. Oh, that's right, because we induced that extra weight. We did a total 15 second wait to begin. Looking good. Ah, there we go. We can just do this forever. All right. So that's pretty cool. That's the for loop in pairs used with a table. So once you get going with that, you're going to know a lot of Roblox. So I will see you in the next video. We will continue on this journey.